<laughs> Becky92, how you doing, my brother, Darren G? Well, have I got a new brother? Let's have a look at your kid. Carney01, I'm signing you know, all that. Your name's Carney, so I'm giving you a bit of respect because I've met a few Carnies. There's hundreds of you, isn't it, lad? So you could be a Carney that I've met in my past. Sparkling melts. Yes, Carney. Kelly Allerton. Do you want me point of view on anything, people? Do you want to have a little chat about anything? Yes, yeah, Smokey. Got jumped last night, mate, did you, kid? Tyro. What do you think about jabs? Yes, Honey B. I don't know, I've always been scared of needles, that's why I've never had one. I'm not lying to you. I'll tell a lie. I've had one put in my arm when they wanted to take bloods. Never had any other needle, never had a tetanus, never had a BCG, never had a, a flu jab, a hep B jab, a, this, that, this, that, this. I've never had none of them. Why? Because I've always been scared of needles. Which is a good thing. I haven't been a dentist since I was... 11. I haven't been to a dentist since I was 11. Big granted, but to me all. Yes, AD Bench for French Bulldogs. So I've never had them, mate. I've never had a jab. You know, when you've got you've got people that use the same things to push substances in the body, but they're not considered the same type of uh, radic. I know that I know the substance is different, but they're still harming themselves to get this substance into the system, and that's what jabbing yourself on a regular basis is basically self-farming that's why I said yesterday there's loads of things you're self-farming with and you do it on a daily basis you're drinking every Friday and Saturday night you drink now you think oh it's just a way to open my mind and relax and have some fun when in reality you're self-harming your body It doesn't matter how you're taking what I'm saying. You might think I'm chatting. The facts of it is, alcohol is poisonous to the body. And on a Friday and Saturday, you're putting it in you. And then you moan why you feel like on a Sunday. Because you've just poisoned yourself for two days. Hundred percent agree with you, says Carney. How are you, Natty? Good. But people do it every day. And they know they feel like they've had a drink. It's not because they've drank too much or, or had too less or had a bad turn on food, during. It's because you've poisoned yourself. And the best people to watch you get through is the ones that don't drink. So you see the ones that don't drink on a regular. Watch them when they've had a good piss up. Watch them for weeks. <laughs> poisoned. And there's loads of things, isn't it? That's what I'm saying, lad. You know, there's just loads of math that we do on a regular basis that is harming us. It might be harming you psychologically. Some things are, obviously, but there's some things that don't harm you psychologically. You just do you physically. But as you know, it's all connected. Your body, your mind and the soul is a trinity. Fill pars into his mushrooms. And that's why you walk around like a shroom lad, isn't it? I feel people that take mushrooms are like... Pe and, and there's loads of... For some reason, you've got governments popping out across media outlets saying it's good. 
they can they call this something don't they when you're taking them mushrooms um, what do they call it but look la if you're all consuming mushrooms on a daily basis thinking it's helping the brain and it's opening up your mind I'm right it's opening up your mind it's poison regardless anything that you can put in your mind and it disturbs the flow of it is wrong I think you get these nuggets and a lot of nuggets start preaching about DMT Oh, have you had to go with DNT? You should have a go with DNT. It absolutely changes your life. You see the same person two years later, diluted. Nothing's happened in life. And you remember years ago, all the boys used to go back and get on the AO and get the thing out and have a little party. There's a craze now where you get all these little floaties. That's what I call them, floaties. Do you think they're in a different world, Daniel? It's weird. But they all often get on a pipe. And get on a pipe as if they're not crackheads. <laughs> because they're smoking DMT, it's sweet. No, you're on a pipe inhaling a substance. You can reach them heights without these substances, and that's the point I'm making. I've had experience in my past and people are saying to me, have you had DMT? You had DMT? I'm going, no, I'm just here. Way. Don't know how we got there, but it weren't with any substance. And all of us have got the ability to reach into that higher level of thinking. And you don't need substances. You know what breaks that down for you to tap in? Stress. That's my opinion. The struggle, the stress, the fact you breaks the psyche down and then you it lets you think like that, lets you feel like that. That's my experience. You know, it's not read from a book. Back to the point, what do you think about jabs? You were probably on a bar in the ones that the governments roll out in in with the narrative that the, to safeguard your children. I'm not sapping into it. I'm not sapping into it. They are what they are. Don't really care. But then you'll have a juice head. That's jabbing all these substances into the backside to give them make them feel better, make them feel stronger. Without them, they feel weak and they don't feel strong. They feel ugly, they feel fat, they feel this, they feel that, they feel that. Now, in, instead of addressing them insecurities in the first place, they want to try and cheat and jump onto steroids. And that's the majority of why people go onto the steroids, to make themselves look better and feel better in whatever area they're concerned in. The only reason that boxers took steroids is so he can beat him, so he looks better and feels better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Steroids have been going for years, haven't they? Years later. I've never touched them until I landed in prison, but it was around people who was jabbing in the belly button or by the belly button and I'm thinking what are you used to and so the first person I seen um, injecting steroids into their body was James Taylor Pancake Taylor now it didn't matter how much size and how much steroids he was trying to put on he just could not put it on so the mess that he put on just made him look like a little gremlin with no neck, acne all over his back, this, this. So I've gone down to Pancake's normal day, gone in, and Pancake was like in gangster porn star, if you like. You know these little dealers that think, oh yeah, I'm banging all boss beds, I'm a porn star. It goes to the reds, right? So you'd go into Pank's little Mars council house, and then you'd step into his bedroom, 
and his bedroom had a full mirrored ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> it had a mirror on the back of the headboard. I'm just in this room thinking, what the f***? It's got a silk curtain, silk boudoir, silk... I'm just looking at him thinking, lad, what the f*** you do? <laughs> he goes, you know what, lad? I'm starting to take in this growth. Do you want to get on with me? I said, oh, lad, <laughs> what do you mean, growth? Let's see. And he went... <laughs> and because he was making pure dough, he pulled... He never just pulled, like, a dial out. He pulled like a big sleeve of dials on and got all sorts of good. <laughs> How long you been taking that for, punk? Only three weeks, like, can you see the difference? He's in the mirror like that doing all this and I'm just thinking to myself, no, lad, I can't. <laughs> but he's got this placebo effect going on. Do you understand? He thinks he's on it and he's getting big and that's what it is at the end of the day. It gives you the mind strength to develop. So he's there with the big syringe, bigger than his face. Honest to God, get on that lad! I went whoa like that to his face. Do with that, watch. <laughs> just turn it in his belly. I just went, what are you doing? Like, honest to God, you know, a month later, we used to go in town and have a little scream, have a buzz. You know, a month later, that buzz is gone. People are just getting weighed and cut. Why? Because we've got a crazy little juice head. <laughs> That's what it was. Pancake running around the city centre doing this to dorm and doing all this crazy off his barn and off the juice. <laughs> and then you come off the juice and what have you got? A little rice crispy that's being on the sunbed and now looks like a cocoa pop. <laughs> Him and Nath and Dylan in the gym on Great Ormond Street on the treadmill. Just thinking, lie, you've been taking steroids for a decade, you look like a fucking flump. <laughs> a flump with chocolate dribbled over it. Great laugh. And that's the first time I've ever seen anyone inject steroids. First and last, anyway. Never seen anyone else do it. Honestly, God, I just thought to myself, how are you just like, banging that into your belly button and it's not even hurting yet? Happy <laughs> like that. Wah! I'm looking at the needle and go, whoa, don't put that in your belly. <laughs> Honestly, God, mate. And people can back that, you know, it's not... It is what it is, I've just told you a little experience. And the experience was with pancake involved, it's what it is. <laughs> But honest to God, mate, you know, he had pancake and he couldn't scrap. He was always getting... Always getting stuck. Next minute he gets a blade and goes on the steroids, everyone shared of him in the city. <laughs> But he was still getting weighed in, weren't he? You know, off with the kids around the city. And then he'd have to be taught to violence, wouldn't he? Using weapons. You know, look at it. Anyway, it is what it is, isn't it? You know what I'm saying, people. And Liverpool is full of individuals like him. Absolutely no fight in them. But then they go on the steroids, all of a sudden they're fighting the whole world and the whole world scared of them. <laughs> it's weird. Why is he called Pancake? I think it's because his face is pancake. But I'm not too sure, lad. Because he used to have like a flat face like him. But I'm not too sure. Anyway. Some people have to have a jab on a daily basis because they're diabetic. You know, medicinal purposes. So, when you've got people who don't want to do it, but have got to do it for medicinal reasons, to, for health benefits, and then you've got these people that uh, don't have to do it, but do it, it's twisted, isn't it? And believe it or not, mate, and in, in every city, you've got a juice bomb gym. What's a juice bomb gym? It's that backyard gym where you go on and you're just looking at everyone and they've overdone every steroid you can get. And you're going in there and you've got men looking like horses and pigs and can match. They've got legs bigger than the back and then no neck. Do you understand what I mean? They're all like that. Most of the noses are against faces. They can't even see past the noses like that. Mm, how are you, Darren? <laughs> well, lad, you're massive, but you're a dunce. 
<laughs> and they all end up like that. You look at every juicer that lands in the 40s and the 50s and what have you got? Little fat messes with noses. <laughs> you can't see past them. Honestly, God. So just don't... Yeah, if you're 16 years old or you're 18 years old and you dedicate yourself to the gym for the next 10 years, by the time you're 26, 28, you will look like an athlete. That's it. Standard procedure. And everything that you've earned in the last 10 years off your training, you do not lose. You keep. And there's a thing called muscle memory. So even if you have a little six weeks off, eight weeks off, and you think you're losing everything, which you do, only takes 12 weeks to be a reset. Your muscle memory kicks in, so you're automatically at an advantage again. If you're 16 and you tap into steroids at 17, by the time you're 27, you look like... And if your body doesn't look like because you've been taking the steroids, right, and you've had enough money to keep the momentum, because it doesn't start there, you know, it goes one mil, two mil, three mil, four, five mil, six mil, nine mil, more, and then you wrote off. So you were 27 after taking steroids since you were 18. You're looking like you've got all the side effects. you got all the side effects. Acne all over your back. Your bones have enlarged off the growth. Your jaws square. You're not a macho kid to have made you look macho. You can get kids with purely little feminine, you know, proper men. You can get them with feminine jaws. And then you go on the growth and all of a sudden you've got just big square jaws. And what you'll see on a lot of MMA fighters, because through their careers they use growth. And they've all got these square jaws. So just don't take steroids, mate. Honestly, God. I know it might be, like, the quick way to looking good for the ladies in the summer. I know you might be a little bit insecure and a little bit whatever. But steroids are a short-term option. You know, they'll give you the short-term release of what you're dealing with. But it won't be long-term. So... If you've got a life that's in a bit of a pickle and you don't really know how to get out of that pickle but then you look on a steroids as a way of making you feel like you're getting out of this pickle. Steroids bring a whole line of problems into your life. Like, you just don't go out, buy steroids and then take steroids and it's just a, it's, it's like a vitamin you're taking every morning. Do you understand? It's not like that. 